We've been asked by an investment company to help them identify the top startups by growth percentage from a very long list. So how do we approach this? The first thing we do, we create a new worksheet. We will name the worksheet Growth. And then we will pull the name financials, the names of the companies into rows and we will pull 2015 growth percentage onto the stage. So now we have our list of names, we have our growth associated growth per percentages, but they're not in any order and they ask for the top growth companies. So we're going to click on this icon, which is descending sort. So now we have the, the names dis, um, sorted according to descending. But we have, if you look down here at the bottom, we have 1,000 records, 1,000 rows. So that's, that's difficult to grasp. So what we're going to do is we're going to limit our list to 10. So how do we do that? What we can do is we can create a set. So we click on, we do a right click on name financials, create set. And we will name this top 10 static. Now we're actually going to select the top 10. And then click on set and add to top 10 static. So we have our set of the top 10 producing or the top 10 growth companies. We're going to pull this into filters and now it's filtered out all of the names except the top 10. That's awesome, that's great. But there's a problem. We don't live in a static world. A week from now or a month from now or six months from now, this list may have changed and the top 10 growth companies may be different. So we want to make this dynamic. How do we make it dynamic? So what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a dynamic set. And rather than using name, which can be ambiguous, you could have uh, multiple Smith companies and multiple Jones companies, but if we used ID, IDs are unique, we know that. So we're going to right click on ID, create set, and we're going to name this set top 10 dynamic. And we're gonna take a shortcut, we're gonna click on top, by field, and it's the top 10 2015 growth percentage and some, the aggregation doesn't matter because it's all um, going, to, going to come out the same. So we click on OK. Now we'll pull out our st static filter and we're gonna pull in our dynamic filter. And notice we have exactly the same information, but this is dynamic, that means when the list change, when the, um, the names on the spreadsheets change, uh, when different companies are included in the spreadsheet list, this will actually update dynamically. So that's awesome. But we wanna make this, we wanna allow the companies to be able to, to modify the list. The companies might decide that they would prefer to have a list of 20 companies. Say that they just don't feel that the list of 10 is giving them enough flexibility. So they, they may want 20, or they may want 40, or maybe they only want to concentrate on five. It would be nice to give them the flexibility for them to be able to set the parameters. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a parameter for this dynamic set. So we're going to right click on 
the dynamic set create parameter and this parameter do we want it to be a set number or do we want it to be a range I think it would make sense to make it a range because then we could determine what would be a reasonable range we don't want to allow people to go out side of a reasonable range so the minimum number will make uh, say five because they they'd want to look at at least five companies on their list and the maximum number should be reasonable the maximum number of companies that they want to look at out of a list of a thousand might be a hundred so we'll we'll look at 100 and the step size will give them a lot of flexibility with this we'll make the step size of one so click OK now we have our parameter and notice our our left pane here is growing because we have it we have the parameter uh, added to it okay so now we have our parameter um, now if they need to make any changes uh, they would just go into the parameter and make the modification but the parameter needs a control they need to be able to control it easily from their visualization so we're going to create a parameter control we're going to right click on the parameter and click show parameter control we'll pull it down here so now we have a parameter control but there's a problem notice nothing's happening when I'm changing this but what's the problem well the parameter is not the parameter control or actually the parameter is not um, attached to the set so we need to attach the two so we're going to right click on the set edit set and we're looking at how does it determine the number in the visualization it's determined here here we have a 10 so we click on this down arrow and it says top 10 dynamic parameters on this drop down so we're going to select that use that instead of the hard-coded 10 okay now okay we have five on our control now as I add numbers integers to the control it's adding individuals to the list so that is fantastic but we want to we want this also to also to be pretty besides functional so we're going to pull growth into color the red numbers are nice but I'd, I'd rather have filled boxes so I'm going to click on the drop down for mark click on squares so now we have boxes and I think that's very attractive there's one additional change I want to make to this is I want to make the title dynamic so I'm going to look at our detail list space and there now when we change the number within our control it's actually going to change the number on our title that's awesome um, this is an amazing amazingly powerful set of um, 
functions from Tableau, the ability to create dynamic sets, to create parameters and parameter controls. Really, really powerful for analysis.